people have always known that for young children, you can't separate education from health, from family support. Well, then we have to look at the data you know, from all the programs in order to discover what type of outcome or what type of impact that we've made. But we realized for many states uh, working on that, that collecting data is not the same as understanding it. And so now we're moving into a place that not only provides us with tools and strategies for understanding the data that's being collected, but for actually leveraging that for, for some positive change. We recognize we have a lot of information. We now have the ability to link it up and we have uh, increasing pressures for accountability. So it's the perfect storm. Across the nation, states are developing new systems and analytic tools to leverage early childhood data and better serve children and families. After years of effort, many of these tools are now coming online. So Texas is working on an expanded school readiness tool. It's called the Texas Texar 3 um, so Texas Ready Communities, Ready Schools, Ready Students. And it's looking at um, that three-tier view, so looking at the community level, looking at the school level, and then looking at the student level, and looking at ways to improve uh, professional development, be able to allocate resources, professional development, to be able to support our regional centers and local workforce development boards, uh, to be able to support our school districts, to make better decisions Texas's students. The tool that we're hoping to develop or implement in DC um, is a very intuitive tool that individual CBOs will be able to see their own data and be able to act on it positively. We are hoping that that's the architect for our ECID S product where we would have integration with other DC agencies uh, to identify all the data points that are overlapping and also that are different. This is a, a major accomplishment if we can execute this because I think one of the things that we will be able to do is look at early childhood students, see what they did in the third grade, in middle school, and in high school and hopefully then we could see some of the outcomes that happen in post-secondary and career. In Georgia, we're working on our cross-agency child data system, or CACTUS, which is our early childhood integrated data system. That includes data from our Georgia Department of Education, Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning, Georgia Department of Public Health, our Division for Family and Children's Services, and all of our Head Start grantees in the state. But we were still really struggling with how do we manage a shared data system. So we actually ended up with developing a governance dashboard. So what this allows us to do, it's kind of a souped up Google Analytics page. So it allows us to know more about who's actually accessing the system, who's pulling reports, who has questions about it, and what sorts of tweaks do we need to think about to make it more actionable. This, I think, will only help promote more questions about what's happening for children in Georgia, where are we meeting our goals, where do we need to do more. In Connecticut, our most recent Early Childhood Initiative is working with the EC Data Works project and we're working on a data governance dashboard. So the goals for the tool are really to be responsive to all of our providers who've put so much time and effort into entering data into the system and to look across our different programs and be able to get in front of our leadership the quicker answers to what they want to see but to also leverage that to work with other state agencies such as social services, Department of Children and Families, and to be able to show them what we're doing with our ECIS data, what we have, what we can share, and help direct where we serve programs in the future. All of our early childhood partners uh, right now, they all seem to be charged with uh, completing, conducting a needs assessment, uh, a statewide needs assessment. However, as we all know, a state is made up of communities. So you really need a community needs assessment. So what we're attempting to do in Utah is combine our eKids with our community assessment tool, which we call the CAT. The CAT gives our eKids context. How many children are in a given community? How many are in poverty? How many maybe perhaps had risk factors at birth? Our long-term goals for our eKids, as well as our CAT, is to be able to inform policymakers, legislators, directors, program managers, program coordinators, help us to learn which of our interventions, uh, individually or collectively, are really making a difference in the lives of children. Nebraska is working on what's called a community assessment tool, and we're using the what, what has been done in Utah as kind of a groundwork or a framework to work from. It would integrate data across different agencies and different programs 
uh, which is something that would be new to Nebraska at the, within the early childhood um, data field. So it would be used to make decisions around potentially policies or programmatic decisions around uh, maybe we're not providing enough access to certain programs where it's needed within specific communities. So the, the community assessment tool is really designed to provide the data that's needed to answer specific questions of interest. In Minnesota, what we're working on is uh, we recently, with the EC Data Works funding, we funded a data story tool. Our uh, governor's office, legislators, they just don't have time to learn how to use all the cool features we put on our site. So we anticipate that this tool is going to meet their needs and um, give them within just a few clicks a piece of information that's contextualized and contains data and findings that they can take and help make policy decisions. That additional information is going to be extremely helpful in terms of promoting a better understanding of who we're serving. States and partners like EC DataWorks are now working to replicate these approaches and help drive a renaissance in early childhood data use. Previously, the idea was you keep these kids safe and you feed them, and then when they go to school, that's when things really get started. But uh, the amount of research that's coming out is, is really showing that the first three years is some of the most important and lay the groundwork for, for life later on. Uh, it is an exciting time, and I think that the recognition amongst a number of different people in that the importance of those three years is really driving this growth and this renaissance that we're seeing in the early childhood field. So having uh, you know, senators, and uh, policymakers, uh, program directors, uh, paradigm shift, if you will, and beginning to give the early childhood uh, community a lot of attention. We're seeing some uh, movement forward in ways that we have, um, we've been waiting for and have been dreamed of for a long time. And I'm hopeful that moving forward, we'll be able to see that we have better and better systems, with better and better decisions, and we're asking better and better questions. The great news is that really, depending on where states are, anybody can still get involved in this conversation around early childhood data system. They still have an opportunity to get involved, really start with what you have, and then build towards having a culture that's really interested in having more of this information available. There's so many stakeholders that are that are ready and have been ready for the last couple of years, so they're, they're hungry for this information, they're ready to take action on this information. People who have been working in this area for a while have a new sense of enthusiasm about the work, where they might have felt forgotten about in the past, that is definitely not the case. When elected officials from the community level all the way to the White House are talking about what's happening for children birth to five, you know you're in a special field at a special time. Mm -hmm.